Welcome everybody, this is Mr. Fugu and you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. As always, the code will be provided on my GitHub, which is Mr. Fugu Data Science. Feel free to get a hold of me on Twitter at Mr. Fugu Data Sci. We're doing a continuation of the last two videos. We had to kind of work up to this in, in three steps. The first video, we used web scraping and regular expressions to create a file of uh, consolidated mineral, metal, and gem names that we could use to parse our data. The second video, we did some uh, plotting with Bokeh, created a function that would uh, take our data frame and convert it into a GeoJSON object that we can use for plotting and uh, looking at our data. Now, this video will be finishing where we will create our adjacency list and evaluate trends within our data and do a little plotting with Bokeh again. Right now, I have in front of you the uh, top 20 minerals from over 300 drilling sites worldwide. So if you look at this, you can see quickly, okay, gold is very important. Copper, iron, lead, silver, uranium, zinc. Okay, there's something going on with this. So I say, oh, okay, let me go from the frequency of mineral occurrences and look for pairs or triplets or even expand onto that and see if there's anything going on because I remember from physical geology when you're mining or looking for some kind of mineral or metal there will be something that coincides with it if you're looking for copper or gold you have other elements that may show up as traces may show up as an abundance but it will be there. And I wanted to start by saying this, take our file that we had and then split it. And when you split it, you have a list of lists where you have some will have one element, some will have multiple elements. And we take that list and we say, okay, let's look at the uh, frequency or how many elements are in each one of these little lists. So some are just one, some are two, some are larger. And I take that and I say, okay, let's get the numbers of these elements with their little corresponding list. So this one had two, all these had one, two, two, etc. All right, fine. What are we doing with this? We're gonna create a function to make these appear in at least a pairing because we're not gonna com compare something that's individual by itself, okay? So we take this frequency of these minerals and we do a counter and sort it. And I did this because I wanted to figure out, okay, what occurrences of pairings basically occur the most and so I, I would say that in essence from two to five elements can occur uh, at once very frequently I would say okay well why is this important well I have a high likelihood that if I'm mining for something I got a really high chance that you're gonna at least find a pair and that's great because if you're looking at something that's economically viable or worth some money, that's why that's important. Now, I decided let's create a list of minerals found from our data set. So we take what we had above right here and we throw it into our little helper function where I'm taking at least a pair. So I make sure I have at least a pair and I append that and we could print this little thing off and see what it actually looks like. 
So there we are. So we're dealing with at least pairs, so we verify that that's working. Okay, cool. So then now from there, we say let's get a list of all the names of all these minerals. Okay, so let's print that off. And here's our big old giant list that we're going to use. Now, we're going to map this as a dictionary of each mineral and metal pair uh, found. And as I said before, imagine if we're looking for copper and we say, okay, if we're mining for copper, what else would be returned? What other elements would there be? So we say our key is the element of interest. And the value is a list of the value pairings corresponding to the element uh, that we're looking at. So if I had copper, I would say, okay, copper and gold, copper and iron, copper, silver, and lead, iron occurred. So at some particular uh, drilling site, they found copper and gold. They found copper and maybe another drilling site, they found copper, iron. Another one, they found copper, silver, lead, iron, etc. This is going to be used to start getting our adjacency list together because we're looking at pairings. And you could expand this. Think of social networks. That's where adjacency lists can come, in to, uh, come handy. Now, we take, our, we take our little pairing materials and we take our list that we just created from above. We iterate into our uh, pairings. And we could break we could break this up into here, okay? So let's say what what does what does our little friend I look like? Well, here's I. Okay, that's what we're dealing with with our pairings list above. Okay, that's fine. But then what's going on with this nesting? Well. Oops. Gotta pay attention sometimes. Well, here's our little elements. Alright. Then we can say, well, if our little element in our pairings is inside of this list of names, let's do a set difference so then we don't have duplicates and let's create our element appended with our um uh, appended with our uh, list. So let's see what this looks like. Oh. Now, 100 years later. Cool, so we're on a good track. So if we have copper, copper occurs with copper and gold, copper occurs with iron and copper, silver etc okay cool so now i know that this is working got something good going on here now we need to start forming our adjacency list but if you have issues with an older machine or you have memory uh low memory for your machine you may want to use this function to just get an idea of what's going on and this is taking any of our pairings letter uh, only pairs of two nothing larger like threes and fours and fives that we we're just looking at above but in this case this is what we're looking at as a, a smaller uh, idea like a toy this is from the actual data set so if we're looking at copper here's an idea of some of the things that we're uh, parsing through so at one specific site they they had this occur another place they had this occur another place they had this occur okay fine so we iterate through our little list right here and we go inside of our dictionary and we take all of our items and then we say if we're gonna uh, we're gonna iterate through this list this nested list here of sets and we will take our uh, key and we will do a set difference again from our uh, value, which is K, and our key, so we get rid of these. 
and we'll only end up with these. Fine. We could look at that real quick. And there you go. So you notice copper, and then you have everything else except copper is not available here. Okay. Then the next thing that we're doing is we're saying, let's take what we just made here, what we just made here, and let's iterate through this dictionary. Perfect. So we iterate through this dictionary by, we don't need that, taking our items, key value pairs, going inside of our values, iterating through our nested uh, list of sets and we're appending this and what does this look like okay so this looks a little different but it's still the same I took the uh, zinc the copper the gold the copper and all of that right and I'm trying to break up everything into a pair and I'm breaking it into a pair because I want to use this for my adjacency list. This formatting is a little different than what we'll do later, but I'll show you why. Uh, what's going on? I'm using here the full data where we're taking pairs of two, three, four, five, all the way up to what we saw in the beginning of 13. We take our, um, I don't need this, there. We have two functions a create dictionary list of minerals as well as a mineral adjacency list with frequency okay so here's here's the notation here but let's get into it we're taking our mineral dictionary list we're iterating through the dictionary key value pairs then we're going inside of these values here because it's nest, nested and then we're creating a dictionary list where the key will be still the same key we had but we're taking our uh, value and subtracting it uh, as a set difference from our key just like I did in that last example this toy one uh, right, right here that we just did. It's the same thing but for the full data set. Now what I have to do is take what we just stored and do another uh, dictionary list where we're doing the same thing just like we did in the other uh, the other uh, example from above. But I gave two parameters. I gave one with the formatting you saw above just with the uh, the index is switched and then this is the final formatting we'll have and I'll show you what that looks like so we're gonna take the first uh, parameter output and see what this looks like okay so what what you notice is different I still have the key the values are a list of strings and they're all repeating Okay, that's perfect because now it's not uh, listed as uh, tuples in here. Then we take that and we put it inside of this. Where we're saying, let's make our adjacency list where we're taking a default dictionary, we're iterating through our key value pairs of our dictionary, we're taking our values and creating a frequency count appending that frequency count and keeping our key the same and returning our dictionary uh, list which is this this is our dictionary list so from copper we had 4300 or excuse me 4613 occurrences of gold so, if you're mining for copper, you got a really good chance of finding gold and vice versa. If you're finding gold, you're going to find copper. If you're finding gold, you're going to find silver. If you're finding gold, you're going to find lead and zinc. Period. So, 
we store that here as mineral adjacency list. Okay, wonderful. Now, this you don't even need to bother with, but what I did ba basically was say, okay, let me look at real quick and sort by frequency uh, from minimum frequency to maximum frequency. So I knew the max number of things I would find would be 13 and the minimum would be uh, 2 for pairings. This value you don't even have to uh, worry about. So then for plotting, we're getting an idea of what minerals occur with what. We're basically putting together this list and looking at it visually with bokeh. So if you don't remember last time from bokeh, just kind of rehash what we need to input. We got a lot of things right here you need to put from bokeh.io import show output file from bokeh.models import column data source and factor range from bokeh.plotting import figure from bokeh.palettes import spectral 6 and dark 2 now what you're going to notice here why am I creating this thing called F I decided I wanted to put together a list of uh, a few items that were economically viable. Something that's, you know, why people are mining. It's worth money. Here's a few things. Not an extensive list. I chose this right here. You'll see in a second, but we could input one thing, two things, three things, and do comparisons. But I just said silver. I'll show you what's going on here. Got to take our definition of our... Uh, our adjacency list and filter it off and create a uh, empty dictionary where we're saying all right this iterate through our dictionary and uh, go inside of F where uh, we're doing a basically like a comparison and then we're taking our filtered dictionary we're taking our condensed dictionary and I'm not going to go through all of this. You can go through the code for brevity. Well, basically, you're take, going through each of these, and you're taking your list that you have for viable minerals, your mineral adjacency list, and you're putting it through the filter. Then you're taking your condensed file of F, uh, which is this, which is just the things that you want to do comparisons with, and you take your mineral adjacency list and see how those look like when you plot it. Fine. Now, you take the values of um, your condensed dictionary and we're putting it inside of this uh, for plotting, for extracting our minimum data. Then, we're taking that and we're going to get our range values and then we're also getting our... Uh, uh, we're getting the values from this and we're iterating through our dictionary and we're sorting everything then we're taking our nest frequencies here now for the uh, for the actual plotting there's a few things going on we need to take our key our uh, keyword arguments here our quarks for each of these I just kept this because it doesn't matter but basically what you do need to see is you're taking your nested keyword arguments and you're taking your condensed uh, F from above which is just our silver in our case and you're iterating through each of these and this is what's going to be X then you're taking our uh, right here we're taking our nested frequency values and we're extending this and just flattening out our list and taking then our data uh, our column data source which is what you're going to need for actually plotting this and you're saying okay I need my data as a dictionary where my counts equal X which is from here and your counts equal this let you just flattened out which is your frequencies then we need to go into our plotting and we need to call our figure and get our range here and then whatever you plot height as you want and then whatever you want to call this but this is changing today because we're gonna 
and put a few different values and figure out what's going on. And then I'm not dedicating a toolbar location and I'm not, uh, I'm just leaving the tools empty. So then we're doing a V bar graph. We're taking our X argument, we're taking our counts uh, for our uh, X and Y's. And then here you can just, you could just play with this with the sizes and everything in your padding and orientation of your labels. And you plot this thing and you say, okay, for silver, what do I find with silver? Well, these ones right here, you're going to find copper, you're going to find gold, you're going to find lead. And then trace of everything except for some zinc. Okay. Now, what about if we were looking for gold? Everyone loves some gold. Okay. Well, we're going to find our copper friend. We're going to find our lead. A lot of silver and some zinc and some tungsten. A little bit of tungsten. Okay, fine. Well, what about if we do uranium and we did another comparison? I don't know. Iron. We could do two comparisons side by side and it's split by this marker. So if you're looking for uranium, you got a good chance to find a zeolites, which are aluminum silicates. But if you're making this comparison against iron, oh, uh oh, doesn't look like we got a lot of things going on with that iron, huh? Oh, and you also got some copper if you're finding uranium. So we say, okay, what's what's this look like by itself without doing that comparison? Oh wow, you're finding a lot of sulfur, copper. Zinc. That's all you're finding if you're looking for iron. But aside from doing the plotting, we can notice a couple things. If we were to look at like a, a rock sample, if we we're out and about, such as a pegmatite, looking for mineralization zones, I'm, I threw this image up here to give you an idea. If you are looking for a, essentially a barrel, like an aquamarine, you'd have indicator rocks such as these. You know, you'd have some garnet possibly, you'd have some uh, perthite, and things like this. And these are indicators that you can use uh, as a geologist or mineralogist to get an idea if you're in the right track of uh, your target samples that you're looking for. This is the end of my video. I'd like to say thank you for watching. I hope it provided utility for someone. Throw me a like if you thought this was useful content. And please subscribe. And if you do, turn on your notification bell. Have a good one and see you in the next video.